What doesn't have its limitations is a discussion of where the money is going to come from to fund the sport. Stuart Williams touched on it just a few moments ago. How is the sport going to be funded? Well, one of its key streams of income is media rights. The chief executive of Racecourse Media Group, which last year paid £110 million to its tracks from media and data rights, is Richard Fitzgerald. It's also the parent company of this channel, Racing TV. Richard joins me uh, now. Richard, good morning. Good morning, Nick. Uh, I said it's a, an impressive figure that the Racecourse Media Group put back to its its racecourses last year. Um, first of all, what would you what would you be expecting to give to tracks this time round from the year that we've just had? Just to give us a, an idea, just to give us some context as to as to what Racecourse Media Group is is contributing to the to the overall purse of the sport. So for 2019, it was around on a like to like basis, about the same. Uh, it was slightly down um, because we had a few uh, less race courses um, on, on the non-LBO business. But it'll be about the same for 2019. 2020 clearly will be uh, a more challenging uh, year. Yeah, because of, the, because of the situation we're in at the moment. You've also had to contend with the fact that the new fixed odds betting ter uh, terminal legislation has meant fewer betting shops, which has meant... Uh, less income from the original model that you were that you were going forward with. That is correct. Um, last April, with the um, minimum bet coming down to two pounds. Having said that, the shops uh, that have performed better than I think the bookmakers had anticipated. So that's positive. I'm clearly the shut at the moment, and that creates issues for the resumption of racing um, when it comes. But the, the exciting development for me has been the online bookmakers uh, view of the world. They, they clearly have been very supportive of racing. They, they like racing, they want to get racing back. And as part of the new deal that we were putting in place for April 2020 this year, they had already agreed to pay higher fees. We are also developing a better product for them, which I think goes some way to doing that. But it, even more exciting is that we are still in discussions, but they seem to be uh, on site uh, to be paying, again, further higher fees while racing's behind closed doors, or at least while shops are uh, closed, which I think is very positive. Just tell me a little bit about the watch and bet uh, strategy that you're you're moving forward with. This is all all tied in with what you were just talking about. It's a slight difference from um, how people could consume individual races before through their through their apps or, or online devices. Well, it, it's effective. We've gone from a bet to view, which basically you had to have a qualifying bet before you could watch the race. The uh, watch and bet product allows you to. Uh, on a race by race basis, uh, watch the race provided you have a funded account and or you've had a bet in the last 24 hours. So it's more accessible to the consumer. Just give us your overview, Richard, of how how this is going to impact on on media rights payments to race courses, the extent to which the coronavirus crisis is going to impact on, on, on the sport's finances, specifically from your perspective? So from our perspective, it's reasonably uh, straightforward on the basis that a lot of our revenues are driven directly from uh, transactions. So if there's no racing, there are no revenues. Although, obviously, we still have some costs of which we're trying to mitigate with our partners and again all of our partners have been really grown up and, and we're all having detailed discussions about what's fair and amicable during this period. But I think it's fair to say that it's in, for every month it's in the 10 millions, uh, there'll be a reduction sort of in a 10 million pounds a month as a rough, rough idea. Uh, and what about... A bit more than that. So, depending on which month. And presumably then, when racing does resume, it's not going to resume with quite the same vigour as, it, as it, it went into lockdown, insofar as there won't be as many fixtures per day and so forth. So that will presumably incur some sort of a loss um, commensurate with that. 
Yes, although I think we have seen um, for, for some of the racing that was done when, when, when they were the only racing around, we saw some fairly significant increases, you know, two to three times, four times what we we're expecting. So if, if our racing can go early, um, again, very much in the government's hands and related to health and safety and all of those things, we would expect to see uh, some pent up demand and, and high levels of turnover on the product. And as I've said already, we've also we've already got an increase in fees that we've negotiated, and the bookmakers are prepared to pay um, an even higher fee during this difficult time, while shops are shut. So we should be able to help our shareholder racecourses uh, during this time with some reasonable reasonable uh, revenues uh, for those meetings. Would you be able to put some sort of a percentage on that, or is it too early? I think it's too early. It all depends when, when, when we start racing. For example, we'll see how France goes tomorrow. I think we'll, feel, we'll, feel, we'll have a better idea when, when France has had a full meeting. We'll see Germany, but I think France is probably our closest uh, guide as to what turnovers could be. But as, as more racing comes back online, you'll see turnover coming back to more normal levels. You've worked in sports broadcasting and, and sports media rights for, for a long time, Richard. There's been a school of thought, and it's not just here, it's around the world in, in Australia and America, that if horse racing can begin before other sports, there is potential there to, dare I say it, grow a new audience for racing or um, encourage more, not encourage, but provide a a product that is more widely available for people to, to bet on. Do you subscribe to that view or not? Uh, I, I would subscribe to a view that greater interest. I think we've seen it in America. Uh, the American broadcast of, uh, are showing more racing uh, in America at the moment, uh, and they're, they're showing more interest in our racing to be shown in, in America. So I think clearly it, it is an opportunity for racing to, to, to be in the public eye. Clearly in the UK, we're, we're very lucky with our ITV deal, a fantastic partner for racing. We have 92 days of terrestrial television. No one else has anything like that. So, so I think we're reasonably well exposed in the UK. But yes, I think as a sport across the world, this is a real opportunity. Richard, uh, obviously Racecourse Media Group's uh, relationship with the existing terrestrial broadcaster ITV has been a very robust one. April 25th, 2019, you quote in the Racing Post saying discussions had commenced on an ITV deal. Here we are, I know with the interruption that we've had, e even so, uh, in, in May 2020, and we don't know when that, that deal is coming. Can you give us a, a progress report on that? Obviously, it's a commercially sensitive discussion, so generally we don't uh, comment on, on deals that are ongoing. All I can say is uh, I'm positive that a deal will get done. Um, and do you think we will we will find that out soon? I, I think obviously the the, the, the timing of, of this interruption is, is not helpful, <laughs> but um, I would like to think in the next uh, three to four weeks, maybe. And, and Rich, I, you know, I was talking about your your experience in, in media rights and the value of media rights. Does this does this crisis devalue racing's product? I mean, fundamentally, are we less valuable now to ITV, for example? But it doesn't matter that it's ITV. It could be any, any broadcaster than we, were, than we were six, eight, ten weeks ago. No, I don't think so at all. No, no, I think uh, racing, since, since I've been involved now nearly 12 years, uh, I, I hate to say this, but it was difficult to get interest in racing uh, for the broadcasters and I think now uh, with the help of the broadcasters as well to develop the sport and the, and the work that's been going on behind the scenes uh, particularly um, developing racing and, and the personalities and all the good things that have come out and the new formats um, I think actually racing's in a very good position I think that it's the human side of it and the stories that's still to be told um, it's, it's no I think I think it's in a better place than ever Richard, thanks so much for joining us this morning. Very much appreciate it. Thank you, Nick. Richard Fitzgerald, the Chief Executive of Racecourse Media Group.
Subscribe to Racing TV to be notified when more Luck on Sunday videos are appearing online. And don't forget to join me for the show every Sunday morning from 9 o'clock with the best guests.